Welcome to The 100 Club. I'm Tom and I'm joined once again by Rich and Ollie to continue our squad profiles for The 100 Cricket Tournament. We're about to preview and assess the men's squad for the Northern Superchargers. They, of course, led by the world-famous Ben Stokes, but who in who has he got in his supporting cast? We'll find out in this show. Join us and find out if the Northern Superchargers will run flat. Rich, Ollie, good evening. Welcome back. How you doing? All right. Good. How are you? Clearly yeah, not spent I'm... as much time practicing saying the word Northern Superchargers as you have. <laughs> Northern Superchargers, <laughs> Northern Superchargers. I've had very few reasons ever to say the word Supercharger, funnily enough. <laughs> I, thought you uh, a, I thought you wanted an ancient Porsche that set, set itself on fire. That must have had a Supercharger. <laughs> it had very few things going for it, that wreck. Um <laughs> Apart from it was quite warm when it was on fire. Um, but <laughs> that's when not the point. San, when San Diego had an NFL team, they, they used to sing a song saying San Diego Superchargers, um, and they're not in San Diego anymore, so uh, that song's up for grabs if the, uh, the folks at the 100 want to nick it. Yeah, they'll need a tune to go with it, though, by the sound of it. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly went for it, but I didn't, didn't quite commit. I don't actually need a tune. <laughs> you needed to belt well, it out. <laughs> You should spare our subscribers that uh, that, that pain. Uh, and if there is anyone listening and bearing that, then please do subscribe to the channel. We'd much appreciate that. Uh, we are at the last of our squad profiles. So before you know it, the tournament will have started and we will be conducting our reviews uh, and our streams of the live action. So uh, that will be, uh, frankly, quite a relief to actually get some crickets played and, uh, and yeah. enjoyed. Just yeah, we've talked a lot about uh, about who's going to play. I can't wait to actually see some cricket now. Yeah, but we've seen at least a couple of the players we're going to talk about uh, tonight uh, playing live for England in the recent ODIs, the one-day internationals against Pakistan. Uh, Rich, do you want to talk about the obvious? Um, well, the players we saw excelling today, I think yeah. Brad and Cast had oh. a very good afternoon <laughs> in terms of <laughs> taking five wickets. Uh, yeah. for the first time uh, and then was there at, at the end but uh, no of course we need to talk about uh, the kind of man of the moment England captain or standing captain Ben Stokes who's led the side to a 3-0 win which was hugely impressive given that it was sort of very much a makeshift side um, Stokes is one of those players I think who transcends the sport and I don't think there's many of them um, I think he's a he's a genuine household name in a, a sport that doesn't have many and so it's so important to the tournament really that you know stokes features in it and gets on the field for the superchargers but that's all up in the air a bit, a bit at the minute uh, i don't know if you saw the interview he gave over the last couple of days tom hmm. yes yeah, some uh, some you know it got me a bit worried that report i've you know i've taken most of the news about the hundred pretty smoothly but this one got me a bit worried we sort of i think we sort of alluded to it a little bit didn't we when we we're talking yeah. about the uh, the welsh fire and whether ollie pope was going to be available i think they kind of the, the Stokes kind of comments kind of, I guess, sort of put more focus on the things that, you know, we, we sort of suspected that there's there's got to be conversations going on about are, are, they, are they prepared to risk England test players being involved in cricket kind of in the run up to um, to that India test series? So yeah, it's worth just... saying exactly what he said, I think. Yeah, so, got uh, so in summary, we know England versus India, the first test is being played from the 4th of August through to the 8th of August, five days. Fine. We also know that they've got the second test. I think that is uh, the 18th to the 22nd, Ooh. is it, off the top of my head? No, it can't be that late. It's got to be it's the 12th. a few days before. 12th, Thank yeah. you. 12th, yeah. 12th to the uh, uh, 16th. What we don't know, and because the ECB haven't said it, is whether they are going to be taken into a bubble, and by a day, I mean the England Red Bull contracted players mm. who are the test squad and who are spread through each of the eight uh, men's squads, but they're going to be taken into a COVID secure bubble when they're going to do that, if they're going to do it, and if they're going to be allowed out to go and play the 100. And it can make the difference between them playing one game in the tournament or playing five in some cases, yeah. I think. Yeah, it makes a big difference to their availability. Yeah. They you know, they could potentially just be, be you know, go into that bubble, you know, with you know sort of sufficient time for you know to, to you know, isolate them you know, before any cases 
could come to light. And then, you know, and also stay in the bubble, you know, right, right between those test matches, which would be, you know, basically mean that they're going to have to be, be, be sitting and watching. Well, I think that I think that happens anyway because the tests are so close together. So you have the test on the fourth, uh, runs through to the eighth, and then you've got the one on the next one starts on the twelfth. So there's only really kind of a day or two in between tests that players might be released, given that they usually have sort of two days before the test leading into mm-hmm. it. I think the moving parts are that obviously here in the UK we're having a relaxation of the COVID restrictions on the nineteenth of July. Now we're not going to talk about whether people agree with that or not. That's not for us to say, but that restriction are being eased and one of the things that's going to happen is that if you have been um, double jabbed um, so fully vaccinated then you will not have to isolate even if you're a close contact of a positive test now my understanding is that many of the squad have had their first jabs but not all of them have had their second and i think the same is true of the touring mm-hmm. indian party so the critical issue here is uh how bullish they want to be in terms of players mixing and also the vaccination status of the players and I think that really determines whether they'll be happy with them playing games as you say right up to you know a couple of days before going into uh, into the test um, camp I would say rather than kind of test COVID bubble as it was you know in, in earlier sports. Yeah I guess the thing that makes for me makes me think that they, you know, they might be going to end up in that bubble based route is what's happened in the you know with the the limited over squad and the fact that they've had to sort of spin up a you know an alternative squad at very short notice um you know and i but don't what, what they, no, they've obviously managed to do that with great success you know given the you know given the way that you know that side has gone i'm not sh- quite so sure they'd be you know want to be in the same position again with the test side but what gives me some hope here is what ben stokes actually said and he hasn't been sent out by the ECB to discuss this. He has said, though, in, in on the record, that he wants to play in the 100 and he wants mm. to be a big part of the team and the competition. And I don't think that's unusual between any of the players that we've profiled across any of the you know 15, now 16 profiles that we've done. The players want to play in this tournament. Uh, whether the ECB puts handcuffs on them, I, I, I somehow doubt because they also want the 100 to be a success. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed. And let's talk about his supporting cast then that you mentioned in yeah. the intro. Yeah. So, Ollie, uh, who have we got in the you... youngsters? Yeah. So, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, young lad um, Harry Brook. So, he's been in, he's been sparkling form this year in the in the blast. Um, he made, um, I mean, one way to, to sort of, you know, make yourself popular um, around, around Yorkshire is to score runs uh, against Lancashire. So he made uh, made ninety one off uh, of fifty balls uh, at a strike rate of uh, one hundred eighty two. So um, so yeah, you know, you, you kind of you well on the way to getting a statue <laughs> you, if you're kind of putting those kind of performances. An inflatable um, at least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, or presumably the members were telling him to calm down though at some point. Yeah, <laughs> clearly didn't keep learn it on the deck. <laughs> Clearly didn't learn his cricket from uh, from a you know, boycott on batting VHS like uh, like some of us. Um, but it's it's kind of it's not it's not a one off. Uh, you know, he hit eighty three off fifty four. Um, he hit forty five off twenty six. Um, the North Ants game. Um, you know, twenty two off twelve. You know, one hundred eighty three strike rate again. So he's you know kind of wherever he bats, and he does tend. So far this season, it's kind of depended on really availability of other kind of England players as to where he ends up in the batting lineup. You know, he's kind of you know, been down the order a little bit if Bairstow, Root, Milan have been available. Um, there was one game where um, he actually got pushed up um, the order to open, um, I think just because of the, the form he'd been in. It's a rain, rain affected game against Notts. So they, um, you know, it tended out as being like a seven over thrash. So they, Put him in into open, and he got a two ball duck. So I'm not sure they'll necessarily be trying that one again. Um, you know, we've speculated sometimes on some of these shows. Is it um, are there players that you know it could be a good move to uh, to push them up? Um, you know, and have you know sort of pinch you know, uber pinch hitters. You know, in the in the power play. Um, maybe that was his, that was their experiment to see if that was what they were going to do. And uh, I suspect we'll see him coming in in the in the middle order somewhere. Uh, yeah. But. You know, he's had he's in great nick. Hopefully, you know, carry that form actually you know, through into the tournament. He's got um he's got a batting coach, uh, as in a coach with batting pedigree behind him. Uh, in <laughs> Darren to a batting coach, which is a real <laughs> job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he might have one of those too, but yeah. I doubt it's Darren Lehman. 
uh, who is coaching the Northern Superchargers. Um, you, you may remember Darren Lehman from such episodes as ball tampering in South Africa uh, <laughs> and his subsequent res resignation from his position as head coach of the Australian Test Team. Now, let's be absolutely fair to to him. He was subsequently cleared from all allegations, but did resign as a result of that sorry, sorry incident there with Sandpaper Gate. Um, yeah, I prefer to remember the Darren Lehman that you know just piled on the runs for for Yorkshire over a decade. Well, this so is it. This is it. They're quite canny up in Yorkshire, and they have picked a hometown a hometown hero in Darren mm -hmm. Lehman. He's he, he put up fourteen thousand runs for Yorkshire <laughs> over <laughs> over his yeah. career, and um, was a central part in particular of that uh, championship tight, uh, winning side mm. in two thousand and one, which I think was the first time in thirty years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you it, talk about having a long time, getting a statue, yeah, yeah. thirty years of that, <laughs> absolutely. So he, he, yeah, he's he, definitely he, got the pedigree there. Many years where you know the, you know the the runs that you know the Yorkshire batting lineup were coming with, you know how many has Laban got and how many else has everyone else contributed, <laughs> you know, to chipping around it. Yeah, yeah. no, he's not going to be batting for the Northern Sea Georges. He's going to be coaching. Uh, he has begun. Well, he's got some good pedigree there as well, most famously with the Deccan Chargers. So if you remember in the early years of the IPL, um, he was brought in as initially as their assistant coach. And in the second year, a highly unfancied team uh, was bumped up to uh, head coach of that in the second year, um, brought in such unknowns as Adam Gilchrist and the like. <laughs> <laughs> and promptly won it, but it was a big upset uh, when when he took that team to the to the, the to the championship, the second IPL. So he's got some pedigree there in the short game. He's now also the coach of the Brisbane Heat. So the, this is his second role since mm -hmm. leaving the Australian Test setup. So uh, we'll we we'll hope he do he does all right. He has had some heart surgery last year, so hope he's feeling absolutely fine. But to be honest, he's got some good talent to work with. Um, absolutely very strong yeah. side and we're going to get into it in a sec i guess i guess we are we are you going to tell me that you've put one of his australians in the opening batting power i yes of course um do you want me to give you my, my top three um, yeah go for it do you want to go first so we, we, we've had a lot of australians pulling out of the tournament but one player who will be there he says, touching wood, next week <laughs> just, just, uh, just dead, but never mind. is, is the, uh, the aussie opener chris lynn who's currently playing in the Blast. Um, and he has a very strong record across uh, internationals, you know, IPL, uh, Big Bash as well, obviously. Um, and he's going to be uh, my opener alongside Ben Stokes. And I think Ben Stokes opens because he's done that job a few times for the Rajasthan Royals in the IPL. And it's really my theory of, well, it's not my theory, it's, you know, give your best batters the most amount of balls. So maybe you don't necessarily think of Stokes as a as an opener in, in longer formats, but I think in the 100, I think he, he'd do well at top. And then I had a huge, exciting uh, Harry Brook coming at three, principally because of that hitting that Ollie's discussed, uh, and followed by the, the very experienced Faf Plessy at four. Yeah, who's going to captain the side, I noted. Yeah, I think that makes sense. He brings a lot of experience, you know, nearly 240, 80, 20 matches across his career. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's a fairly shrewd move, especially since Stokes, we, we, we know he's going to miss some games, certainly. So um, yeah. I think we had that question in our live uh, stream for the wildcard draft. You know, why not Stokes captain? Well, Fafta Duplessis will do the job. Um, so that's, um, so that's, have you got it similar, that's a similar lineup to what I've got, only I'm going to put, um, only put one name up, uh, up top. Um, and so uh, I'd open with uh, Adam Lythe, who's who's been opening, um, uh, you know, for, for Yorkshire. He's got you know, kind of a you know, very good strike rate, and kind of doesn't doesn't play the kind of way that you kind of would imagine. Kind of the Adam Lythe of the Test, you know, Test career, you know, playing. Actually, he's a you know, clean striker of the ball, um, but. I think we'll actually will will go well when this kind of sh you know, short and power play will actually, you know, actually kind of play proper cricket stroke, but you know scores quickly. And mm -hmm. so I in my lineup it was Lyth and Lynn to open, and then uh, and then Stokes at three. So again, I kind of want I don't want Stokes kind of down the order, you know, just coming in with a few balls left to have a thrash. I do want him to get get plenty of balls, but I I want to have um I want to have Lyth and uh, and Lynn. Oh, yeah. 
I'd so like my the, I'd, I'd like the five. Um, I think he's he deserves a place in the side. I mean, my issue would be that you know, he's, yes, he's very experienced in the T20 Blast over here, and he's played a bit of franchise cricket in Pakistan, Super League, and the Bangladesh uh, Premier League. But you know, both both Stokes and Lynn are internationals. They've also done it in the IPL. So for me, that's why I think they're the stronger opening pair. And I think I'd like that five as a you know, useful middle order player. Lynn and Stokes is a left hand, right hand combo, is it? So, uh, yeah. uh, so I, I quite like having a bit of that as the the opening partnership during the power play as well. Um, I go on, go on, Ollie. Lie the left hand as well. Lie this left, yeah. Yeah, okay. I was say you, you 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 had me questioning myself there with your comment, Tom. <laughs> <sighs> well. Yeah, I was trying to make an answer for myself. Oh, right. Okay. Um, okay, well, let's leave it there for now. Let's let's talk about the middle order, and I might come back to that. Um, who have you got, uh, Rich? So I had the um, uh, um, Brian Pass coming in, the, the Durham all-rounder, uh, South African-born, but obviously qualifies uh, for England. I've um, mm. been quite impressed with him over the last few days. Uh, he started off as a batting all-rounder, but has really developed his bowl in the last few years and you know touches 90 mile an hour now. So genuine pace option and a pretty decent strike rate as well in the T20 blast, nearly 150. Nice. So, uh, yeah, been pretty good, good, good record there. Um, I had him followed by John Simpson, um, a very kind of experienced um, wicketkeeper on the county circuit. Uh, obviously, has, hasn't had a fantastic couple of days for England, but I think he's he's a very solid glove man, and I think that's a useful thing to have in in, in the in the hundred. I don't think yeah, you I... want part time keepers. It'd be deeply um, unfair, I think, to judge him on being thrown into an England squad at the last minute, sort of thing. He's he's got a very good record across a number of years, so well, yeah. he's, he's, he's going to make the team. That's not. Much he's going to be in that squad, just you know, oh, you know, on a whole body of work, not just you know, yeah, in a yeah. couple of games. So, yeah. I think the fact he got that nod for the England setup shows you know, you know how well uh, regarded he is. Yeah, he's got uh, two uh, thousand two thousand T twenty runs, striking at one thirty. There you go. Uh, I presume you're similar, Ollie, are you, with those two. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm possibly out the other way around, um, okay. but yeah, not you know, no no issues with that that middle order. Okay, uh, I'll do that if only because that's what England have done with them. <laughs> Might be a tip. Um, okay, uh, and what about bowlers, Ollie? There's a big uh, name there. So I've got. Uh, I'm going David Willey, Callum Parkinson. Um, and then a couple of spin options. Adil Rashid, obviously got to be in there. And yeah, you guessed it. Najib Uraman. Are Uraman. you agreeing with that yeah. one, Rich? Um, I was agreeing that Parkinson plays when Stokes plays, and then when Stokes is out the side, uh, then I would probably have Matthew Potts as an additional pace bowling option, because I think you use that yeah. when Stokes isn't playing. Um, yeah, because otherwise it does look quite spin heavy, doesn't it? With yeah, those yeah. back end. And also then had if when Stokes goes to the test side, then I bring Ben Rain in as an additional all rounder. So I think between Ben Rain and, and Matt Potts, you've sort of got half of Ben Stokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting how many players you need to put inside to replace Ben Stokes. But yeah, okay. it just shows the value of having genuine all rounders, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. So valuable. I mean I, I really like that bowling lineup that you've got there. Cass, Willie, Parkinson, Rashid, Uraman. I mean, let's talk about Adil Rashid. He is going to be a big player on this tournament, I think. Is there any doubt in that? The variety that he brings in terms of his delivery. I think in one of the um, the, the T20s the other day, he bowled a, a 70 mile an hour ball, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, um, he's he's just on top of his game at the minute. Um, yeah, bowls as many googlies as he does conventional leg leg uh, breaks, but uh, you know, fantastic control. Uh, obviously, for England, I really like the way uh, Owen Morgan backs him as a wicket taking option. Yeah, um, and I think it's going to be similar in in hundred that he's going to be you know used in that role. But he's also middle be, overs. Uh, yeah, middle, middle overs. I think putting the squeeze on. But as you say, he's got that flexibility in his game. So if he does need to fire it in into the pads, then he can do that too. Yeah, beautiful. I think just looking at the side as, as it's laid out there, I wonder if we're doing David Willey a bit of a disservice by batting him down at eight, you know, given the amount of time he spent up the order 
in domestic T20. You know, again, he's got a pretty healthy strike rate and you know, nearly 3,000 runs in the format. So I think I look at his record side by side against John Simpson, and I think I'm probably going to bat Willie, it's Willie true. ahead of Simpson. You, would you agree with that, Ollie? Well, I mean, it's you know, it's certainly a possibility. You know, he's a, you know, kind of think of him. I think of him as a bowler, but you're right. He's, you know, He's, a, he's, a, he's another genuine all-rounder, though, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. And it's not like Adil Rashid's a fool with a bat, actually. No, uh, I mean, if you, if, you, <laughs> if you need a bit of if you're down uh, long handle treatment, yeah. you can get it, get it from Adil. You know, it's exactly. a long ball when he wants to. So I, I, I think that's a pretty awesome lineup. Uh, we heard uh, the data analyst... Uh, uh, Dan Weston for the Birmingham Phoenix sort of give a nod to Callum Parkinson as, he, in his opinion, mm. the best uh, leg break bowler in the in the land currently. Uh, we've got, <clears throat> you know, a true superstar in Rashid. We've got a proven quantity in Willie. Cast is bursting through. Majibu Rahman's done it for a number of years. Um, Stokes, Faf to Plessy, Lynn providing experience and leadership up the top. This is a top three side. Am I wrong? I think they're a good side. Yeah, it does look like, it does look like a strong side, and they've reacted well, haven't they? Yeah, uh, they've they've held on to Lynn. Uh, they lost Aaron Finch, but they brought du Duplessis in, and that, that seems like a shrewd move. Yeah, and then obviously yeah. Majib is a very good spinner as well. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. looks a useful side. I it think is. And was... terms of pure strike rate, you know, you, they they are losing something by losing Finch, right? So I think if you just to compare strike rates, what is it? Finch goes at what about one one forty one. You know, over his career, and I think that's up to you know, in the one fifties internationally. I mm. think Duplessis is more like one one twenty nine, one thirty. Yeah. Um, but I guess you know, just experience in kind of you know middle order, sort of getting you over the line in run chases is you know is also valuable. And I think you know he comes with bags of experience. So yeah, and we haven't talked about someone like Tom Kohler Cadmore yet either. You know, there, there's some good depth in there as well. Not a top three side for me. I no. think they lose too much when Stokes goes. I think if he was playing eight games, perhaps, but I think without him. And I worry about the the kind of genuine pace bowling options. Um, I think you've got Willie, obviously a lot of experience. Cass is growing in experience, but you know it's fairly raw at this level. Um, yeah. And I think it's just I think it just speaks to the hundred and the concentration of talent that. Yes, it's obviously a very good, very good team. But is it a top three team for me? Maybe not. Well, I tell you what, I'm not going to actually ask you to put your neck on the line right now because in the next week we are going to do our predictions show. Uh, and I'm going to uh, set you all sorts of silly and serious questions <laughs> where you're going to get every opportunity to go. And some of them will be the obvious ones, like who's the winner, who are the top three, etc. who's the wooden spoon, who are the star players. But then there's going to be a load of fun ones in there as well. So... Uh, Save your powder. Keep it dry. <laughs> Am I mixing my metaphors there? Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what Quite I possibly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we'll have that coming out in the next week. If you'd like to get involved or start giving some early predictions, then please stick them down below. That would be much appreciated. And do subscribe and turn on the little notifications on the bell there so that you get a, a word when we're going to stick something out, and uh, we'd appreciate that very much. Uh, Any final comments, Rich? we have set up. Yeah, yeah, we have set up a fantasy competition for yeah, well, we yeah. haven't. The good people at Wisden <laughs> set yeah, up the fantasy competition and we have created a public league called the 100 Club. So if you go to the Wisden website, set up your team and then look for a league to join, just search for the 100 Club and you should be able to join us. And uh, if you think we've been talking nonsense about cricket and you know a lot better, then here's your chance to prove it. Honestly, though, don't take any pride if you beat me. I lose every fantasy competition I've ever been in. I will, though, because, you know, I love it. I'll stick the link down below in the description. Find it there. Uh, use the code. Join the team. Uh, we'll on, no doubt um, have a bit of fun with that as we're going forward. So, Rich, Ollie, thank you very much for joining. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. And we'll catch you next time on The 100 Club. <laughs>